So far we've solved harmonic motion using sine and cosine functions, but we can also write down solutions using complex exponentials. So in this video we'll introduce the concept of complex notation, so exponentials with a complex power, and then in the next video we'll show how we can use complex exponentials to solve the equations. For some problems this notation makes our life just a bit easier when we're writing down the solutions, and then we'll see how that works in the next video, but for now we'll just look at how this uh, complex exponential works and its relationship to sine and cosine functions. So to begin with, if we have this i being the square root of minus 1, some incredible things are true. First incredible thing, e to the i theta, so theta is some variable, e to the i theta is equal to cosine theta plus i sine theta. So this equation connects the trigonometric functions cosine and sine with the exponential function and the square root of minus 1. If we allow theta to be equal to pi, then e to the i pi would be equal to minus 1, because cosine pi is minus 1 and sine pi is 0, which leads to Euler's formula, e to the i pi plus 1 is equal to 0. And Richard Feynman once said that the, this is the most remarkable formula in mathematics. So I want to think now about a graphical way, a visual way of understanding what e to the i theta actually means. And we're going to start with a circle, and a circle can be described using a parametric equation where x is given by r cos theta, like this, and y is given by r sine theta, like this, where r is the radius of a circle. And as we trace out theta, as we increase theta, then x and y will plot out a circle. Now we could write these equations here for x and for y using complex exponential notation because the real part of r times e to the i theta is r cos theta. So these two equations here are actually the same. Similarly, the imaginary part of r e to the i theta is equal to r sine theta. So these equations here are the same. So now let's graph what happens when we change theta. So here's a animation here. So theta is increasing. This red arrow is the parametric equation of the circle as I increase theta. And I'm plotting out x in this direction and y in this direction. And what I'm plotting over here in this these black dots and the blue line is the height of this phasor. So that is the y component or in other words, the imaginary component of r e to the i theta. So we can think about the vertical direction here as the imaginary part of e to the i theta, and the horizontal part as the real part of e to the i theta. And the vertical part here will plot out a sine function, because y is equal to r sine theta. So this axis along here is in radians, and as I animate it forward, I get a sine function. If instead of plotting the height of this phasor from the from the axis, I plotted the length of the phasor from this vertical axis here, then I would get a cosine function here. So we see a connection here between the parametric equation of a circle and e to the i theta if we consider this vertical axis being imaginary and this horizontal axis being the real part of our e to the i theta.